I, something terrible happens to me this evening, so I don't want to go there. Um, I want to introduce you to a longtime friend, almost 20 years I've known Peter Grant from Australia. Uh, Peter has been for um, uh, even longer than that, the, uh, the Director of Interpretation for the Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife Service. Virtually everything that has happened in interpretation in his state of Tasmania in the last it's generation little, little bit. has been behind his leadership. And I've had the pleasure of watching it grow and become one of the best interpretive programs of any park system uh, that I've worked with anywhere in the world. Uh, Peter uh, also has been a leader in the interpretation field uh, throughout Australia. He was for three years the president of uh, Interpretation Australia. Uh, he um, uh, also spent three years editing the newsletter. During that time, Peter's leadership really contributed to the professional growth of the IAA, as it's called. Uh, and uh, uh, in, um, in, two, in 2011, so just a couple of years ago, uh, Peter was honored with the highest and most prestigious award that Australia gives uh, for interpretation called the Georgie Waterman Award. He's also an avid traveler, he's a writer, and he's a great grandpa. Would you welcome Peter Grant? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Um, just as well I don't speak American because I think I might have been blushing otherwise. But <laughs> I picked up a little bit. Um, thanks for coming all the way down to the Aquariat. Close. Um, I wanted to talk about Tasmania's experience in developing apps. Um, just a quick little question. Who has users or is familiar with apps? Put it the other way, who isn't? Okay, good. Okay. Um, to put one thing out of the way before we go any further, we have not yet developed these for Android, and yes, we will. It's a matter of money. So at the moment, I'm speaking about um, apps for iDevices. OK, I've called this a tale of two tablets, um, because in the Old Testament, Moses was supposed to have received the Ten Commandments on two tablets of stone. So there he is. Um, sorry, this is a bit small. I, you know, I am a, um, a what's it called? PowerPoint skeptic. Um, <laughs> something always goes wrong with PowerPoint. I've done keynote addresses where I don't use it, and everyone sort of wonders where to look, but never mind. <laughs> There's the other kind of tablet. And I guess that's why I've called it that. I'm sorry I didn't actually go on to explain on the program that it was about using interpretive apps in Tasmania. So you people have either accidentally come here or you're the studious ones who read in the back about what this title meant. OK, a little bit for those who don't know where Tasmania is, a little bit about it. There's Australia. There's another way of looking at it. <laughs> Who's to say that north has to be up? OK? So, you know, we, we could, instead of being down under, we could be over the top. And of course, that would mean that Tasmania would be the little island sitting over the top of Australia. So that's where Tasmania is, using the convention of north being at the top. Uh, a small island, but not that small. It's about the same size as the Republic of Ireland, about the same size as Sri Lanka. It's a heart-shaped island, and it's a beautiful place. I wanted to give you a quick idea of, of Tasmania so that our apps are in some kind of context. About 25% of Tasmania is declared World Heritage Wilderness. It's uh, a very wild place. We have a population of only about half a million people. Um, and so our population density is less than Norway, which is one of the lowest densities in Europe, I believe. Oh, somehow we missed out on the animal that everybody knows. I'll just go back. No. No? I hit back, don't I? Um, just go from the beginning off. No, you do like this, and then you go back and forth instead. Okay. You can go back and forth here. Tasmanian devil. Um, you know, we're famous for that. Um, it's actually an endangered species at the moment because of a facial 
contagious cancer that it can get. Uh, very rare in, in the natural world, but unfortunately they have it. Uh, I'm not here to speak about that, but you will understand that uh, you know, even in paradise there are threats. Tasmania is a, a, beautiful, mount, a, a beautiful mountainous island. Um, this is the famous Cradle Mountain. Um, we're also the coldest state of Australia. Uh, in some senses, we don't actually get as low as some of the interior parts of mainland Australia in temperature, um, but we do get snow, unfortunately not enough to make it a very reliable skiing destination. So the worst of both worlds in some ways, but we love it. It's, it's a very seasonal place. And that's my wife, Lynn, rugged up against the cold at Cradle Mountain. It's also uh, a very forested um, part of the world that we have uh, temperate rainforests like this, which would fit remarkably well into um, Sweden and many other parts of Europe. We have some of the most delightful uh, mammals anywhere in the world, and most of them are marsupials, uh, from the Latin for pouch. Marsupium is a pouch, um, what we call a wallet. Um, this is a pygmy possum, and uh, you can see how small that one is. That's a paddy melon. That's a, a type of wallaby. Wallabies are the smaller version of kangaroos. So this is only found in Tasmania, um, and it's called the paddy melon. And yeah, very cute. So we've got lots of cute animals. We've also got a few of the spiky ones. This one is called an echidna. And, uh, it's one of only two egg-laying mammals, monotremes, the other one being the platypus. We've got a lot of beautiful coastline, fantastic destinations for walking, including in the mountains. And now I want to move on to apps. Now, you can probably tell that I'm old enough to have been born analogue. That is, that my watch goes around like that. <laughs> and uh, this is my grandson, Felix. And uh, he was born digital, and uh, this is him practicing with a digit. And one of the stories about Felix and my other grandchildren, there they are with their great-grandmother who just died last year. Um, she had an iPad, and they were showing her how to use the iPad. That's what I mean by born digital. These are kids who understand the computer world, who understand the whole operating system, everything. You know, as they say, if your computer breaks down, ask an eight-year-old. Well, in this case, Felix is just three. Our old way of doing interpretation involved the interpreter being the fount of all knowledge, handing down to our audience the great knowledge that we had about, in, in the case of national parks, the natural world and the cultural world too. So we were a bit like Jehovah passing down the uh, tablets of stone to a grateful audience. But then these kinds of tablets have actually helped to invert the way that we look at interpretation. We've found that they are a good means uh, of disseminating information. That's good. That's still, though, a top-down method. We had developed on our website, I think we were one of the first park agencies to use the web as a, a very large resource of material, and we had a lot of information about Tasmania's birds. This is the endemic Tasmanian pied currawong. No, it's not a pied currawong, it's a currawong. And we had information about our birds, typical web page, you were able to get the sound, sometimes we could have a bit of video, um, but there it was, in its form, on the web, and you could sit down at your big desktop, or your little laptop, or even your portable device, and you could look at that. So someone, might have been me, it might have been my mate Timo at work, and we decided that why couldn't we put that information since it's already digital, into an app. And so we developed our first app, which is called Bird in the Hand. 
and uh, around the room there are, I think, Eyal and Bill have... This will be very distracting, but look, you may as well... I'll, I'll pass these around and you can be distracted while I'm talking and just fiddle with the apps. Sam's got one too. You got Bird in the Hand there? No, but I'm about to. <laughs> what we found with Bird in the Hand was that um, it actually enabled you to enhance the way that you looked at information. And so holding it in your hand, I don't know if this sound will work. Yeah, okay, you're hearing various sounds. And this is the superb fairy wren. Yeah, and that one's a frog, not a bird, but. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's great to have that natural sound happening around, so you can keep it going. What we had, of course, was the information, the, um, the visual information as well as in words. We had sounds, we had maps, and it worked nicely. And then we developed frog log. There are only 11 species of frog in Tasmania, and so that was a nice, easy one to do as well. We had it on the web we decided to make it into an app. <coughs> but then we discovered, oh, actually, I, I really should play these because the, there's one particular frog called the banjo frog. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder why it's called the banjo frog, also known as the pobble bonk. And actually, what they do is one says bonk, but, but there are so many of them that they're going bonk, 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 bonk. It's a lovely sound. Sometimes you look around for the hillbillies. And it's the green and gold frog. No, it's a brown tree frog, sorry. But the great thing that came with iOS devices is that most of them have an inbuilt GPS. It's not a great big clunky thing like that, but it's actually built into the tiny little device. What that enabled us to do was give some power back to the users of these apps because they could log where they had heard or seen a frog. So you'll see in the right here, sightings. And what that enables people to do is send the logging, log their sighting into our natural values atlas so that it's becoming, we've heard a little bit about citizen science. Uh, this is enabling us to cover far more territory in terms of recording the presence of frogs um, because there are lots of people out there listening, looking for traces of frogs. And then our third app, we've got four and we're going to continue developing them. This was our most popular uh, brochure, our most printed brochure, 60 Great Short Walks, a cooperation between the Parks Agency, Forestry Tasmania and some other agencies. And this enables people to go on basically day walks all around the state. Um, Tasmania is, is a very popular tourist destination Tourism is the, the number one employer in Tasmania. And uh, this was a really important part of visiting Tasmania is to have a chance to go on walks. Um, we printed at least 60,000 of these booklets every year and they're not cheap. They're full colour. They've got maps, they've got illustrations, they've got other information. I don't mind that sound, that's, that's great. Good background noise. Um, but it's, it's an interesting but static form of presentation. Turning it into an app has enabled us to actually crowdsource as well. Now, those who don't know about crowdsourcing, essentially it's, it's a way of <laughs> um, going out to, to people who are interested and asking for their contributions. So in this case, we asked for uh, on various forums, including a bushwalk forum, on our Facebook page. We ask for people to send us, with permission, their photographs and their stories about 
those 60 great short walks. And we got a really good response. So there's our Facebook page with the request. And uh, what we ended up doing was getting a lot of, here's an example of somebody called Phil telling us a story, an example of his walk in the Cradle Mountain area. Um, so we've got crowdsourcing, we've got citizen science, and this also, uh, we're able to tap into social media. So on 60 Great <coughs> Short Walks, you have the capacity to log your walk on Facebook with your own pictures and your own story. It doesn't end up on the app because the app would blow out in size, but it enables people to create the buzz, if you like, about walks um, by logging it with social media, Facebook and Twitter. Some of the images we crowdsourced were from professionals as well, who were happy to donate their images. They get acknowledged. Their photographic skills are fantastic and they're seen, so it's a good form of advertising for them. This is just showing some Tasmanian bushwalking scenes. Bushwalking is our term for hiking, what New Zealanders call tramping, what uh, the English might call hill walking, but whatever, it's all the same thing, travel by foot. And that is essentially what we've done with apps. Um, you got five minutes for questions? Yeah, I, just to sort of sum it up, what, what we've done is move from the top down, us presenting the information. Um, developing apps has, has enabled us to tap into the great love that people have for the outdoors in Tasmania. And I think that is a really important lesson for us as land managers, that um, you know, there is, we don't own the land. We don't own the national parks. We manage them and it's in cooperation with the people who visit them. And so that's been a very important lesson for us. Uh, we're now looking at finding ways of uh, getting more of that feedback from the people who visit and uh, increasing our citizen science. We've got the same now with a whale app where people can log their sightings of whales and seals. Um, Tasmania is a hotspot for <coughs> whale strandings. So we have a very big tradition of people loving to take care of whales and going out and volunteering to help at strandings and actually sometimes successfully moving whales off beaches back to sea. So uh, it's an interesting story and, and when I heard about the title of, of this, or the theme of this conference, it seemed to fit right in. Okay, a couple of questions. Pierre. Uh, two questions. Um, the first one is how you deal with um, um, connection up in the mountains, in the nature, on the air, so always a connection for the phone. Yeah. And you need quite a good yeah. connection for the other one is how, can you, how, how sure can you be about the visitors that they really see that species? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the great questions. And the first one, um, I actually, the aim of these apps is not to stand between the user and nature. We see these as principally pre-visit. Sometimes, of course, people will use them on a visit. In the, the case of bird watching ones, yes, they'll use them when they're out spotting birds or frogs or whales. Um, our mobile phone reception is covers probably 90% of the state, including some patches of the wilderness. So it's not too bad that way. Um, one thing we resisted, um, one of the great walks in Tasmania is to the summit of Cradle Mountain. And it's quite a hard walk. And uh, my colleague Tim, who I referred to earlier, is a, is, is a real geek with computers. And he said, what we could do is we could have on the app a video of Gustav Weindorfer, who was the person who came up with the idea for Cradle Mountain National Park a uh, hundred years ago. Have him as a, a, a kind of a video of him saying his famous words, this park should, th this place should be a park for all people for all time. And I sat there and I thought, 
No. When people are on top of that mountain, you don't want them looking at a screen. You want them looking at what they can see. So we've tried to resist uh, the kind of gimmickry um, of, of turning this into the feature. Th this is the window to people getting out there. And your second question was about the reliability of, of sightings. We've had um, bird sightings from Singapore, which we duly discounted because somebody had seen something, they hadn't put it in their phone until they got back to Singapore and they thought, ah, oh, yes, I saw a... And they log it. Well, you know, that's not much help. Um, we basically have to um, quality assure and the, the people who run the atlas, the Natural Values Atlas, uh, look at the reports, the, the sightings. They can then get back to the people specifically because you leave your email address if you want to. So we can have that kind of um, checking. Yep. Any question Yeah. Earlier you printed 60,000 brochures a year. Mm. How many do you print now? Uh, we're still printing about that many because it's still the uptake of i devices is good, but not that good. So you still print sexy. So yeah, but we expect that once we have it in Android and iOS, it will start to tail off. It's too early yet because we've only had that about one year. Yeah. Did you do it internally, or did you hire it out? We hired it out. We we have. Um, our webmaster, who uh, works for me, is very good at some technical things and he's just starting to learn how to program for apps, but mainly it's done out, outsourced. Um, in Australian dollar terms, we, the cheapest app, the Frog Log, was about $5,000 uh, and the most expensive we're looking at more like fifteen dollars or $20,000. Similar to US dollars, um, in euros, you would bring that down to about three quarters, seventy percent. So I could just ask, um, once you um, once you've created an app, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're happy to use the existing structure, it is possible to get a template. For yeah. So that your second and third app, um, if yeah. you're using the same sort of structure, is, is a fraction. Of yeah. The You'll see that the the uh, template or, or the the structure of the, the three animal ones is very similar. Yep. Now, I know if you charge $1.99 to download the Burnett, now, are you making any money? Um, we, we've make, we're making a couple of thousand dollars a year, which we feed back into developing more apps. Good. Good. Last question. Well, it's not a question. Um, one of the big issues that's been seen in Europe in the, in the future is the uh, restriction in the uh, capacity of the uh, uh, bandwidth? Yeah, the bandwidth to mm. deliver information onto people's mobiles. Uh, tourists now are virtually all accessing information on mobiles. Mm. Well, 50% really. And what people are going to have to look at now is to provide greater Wi Fi for downloading yeah. things so that you're not relying on the, the, cloud, cloud, yeah. the cloud. So, it's something to think about the future. Mm. Yeah, very true. That you can't actually rely on the ability to download mm. something like that yeah. when you're outside. Because all all travellers would know the issues, yeah. Well, Peter, it doesn't surprise me that you're once again on the edge of an innovation <laughs> and interpretation. We want to thank you for that great presentation and all of you for coming. If you've got to go on, now is a good time to run out.